following new teachings, but they are never able to understand the truth. These teachers oppose the truth just as James and Jamras opposed Moses. They have depraved minds and a counterfeit faith, but they won't get away with this for long. Someday, everyone will recognize that fools, what fools they are, just as with James and Jambos. Thank you, thank you very much. So, yesterday I was here in Limpopo for a, a funeral. So, I was with these two other friends of mine that uh, we schooled together. And uh, we were talking a lot around the the, 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 the Pretoria Centre, I don't know if you know it, there used to be a congregation there that uh, utilised the facility for the longest time. And, um, and that facility now is no longer in use, and uh, primarily because the activities that used to happen there, the people who used to conduct uh, the activities at that, they've left it. It is now abandoned. And one of the things the guys were talking about was the economic value and the impact of what uh, that facility used to do because a number of people used to congregate there in numbers and then they will hire uh, places to sleep there for, for in order for, for them to be close by so that in the next service they are able to, to attend. Amen. So they were, they were speaking from, from that point of view to say that um, uh, uh, to, to them they felt that it's a big loss uh, what happened there because there, there is no longer that value that was derived, uh, that, that the community is now uh, suffering as a consequence of what happened to that facility. Amen. Amen. But then uh, we, 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 we then have to ask this question as we read from, because one of the things that uh, God expects of us, uh, that's why Paul here is talking about a certain behavior of people that will be observed as uh, with the times that we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are to find ourselves living in. And we are to reflect on some of these things that are, are being referred to, that uh, people in the last days will then love themselves, that even if they hear the true, true doctrine of God, they may not even want to listen to it. Why? Because they are not necessarily driven by what is in the word of God, but by the driven by the other things. Amen. Amen. So, so, but Paul continuously, even if we will go also to, to Titus as well, in terms of a, a, an expectation of what should help uh, us as Christians for, for, uh, to, call, to even claim to call ourselves a Christian, that there is a certain level of conduct that is expected on people who call themselves Christians. Amen. Amen. I recall in one of our, our Sunday school, I mean not Sunday school, but our, I think two weeks ago, we were talking uh, with Mama Moja about uh, one of the brothers in the Lord who has uh, abandoned the faith uh, primarily because of the conduct of other believers uh, in the church because when he looks at these believers he finds himself uh, asking difficult questions to himself to say but if this type of attitude if this type of behavior uh, is done by them by those who call themselves a Christian watch how much more uh, do you expect from me? And, uh, and it's also something that is going around today in the, in the social media where people are looking at uh, the conduct of certain pastors in the United States who are found to be involved in a number of things that uh, we are not even able to... They, 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 are, they are shocking to the eyes. If you, if you listen to them, if you hear them, uh, they are shocking. But does that mean uh, the faith in Christ is, is now lost because of the behavior of certain individuals in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. So even if we, we, we go back also even in, 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 in First Timothy as well, uh, we will go there, chapter, I think chapter 6 there, 11. Paul is said to Timothy that uh, 
in all of these things that you hear, in all of these things that you see, um, in all these behaviors that are being described, there's still a level of expectation from you as uh, Timothy that you are to teach that uh, this is the true uh, conduct of, a, of, a, of those who call themselves uh, believers themselves. And so that they are, you are able to teach them continuously so that we are able to walk uh, uh, in, the, in the right way. What am I saying, uh, uh, saying this morning? Is that uh, there will always be this type of uh, things that are happening because the Bible describes them. Um, and maybe we think we are not yet there uh, because Christ indeed he did not say I'm coming back on the 15th of so and so day but he talks about incidences that will occur just to show you that uh, perhaps the times that you are in uh, are those times that have been described where you find people being concerned about themselves not necessarily being caring about the next person where people are rejecting the true doctrine of God, uh, but accepting anything that is far away uh, from what is expected of the people of God. And as you observe these things, do they then relate with the times that we find ourselves in? If we were to reread what uh, Mr. Lovu has read there, um, uh, uh, it talks about exactly that, that uh, you will find that uh, people will be the lovers of themselves, lovers of money, uh, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful and unholy, and without uh, unforgiving, uh, without love, uh, unforgiving standards, without self-control, uh, and not lovers of good. Uh, but uh, uh, people who are, uh, who are say, uh, treacherous, rash, uh, concise, and lovers of pleasure rather than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power of the weight. Amen. Amen. So, w what do we understand from this passage? The Sunday school, um, uh, we, we are here to learn to say as we read this passage. Um, and also perhaps I must go to First Timothy as well. Uh, uh, chapter 6, uh, 11. So that when we discuss, we, 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 no, not chapter 6. Let me see if I'm getting it right. 11. Yes, chapter 6, 11. Paul describes the false teachers to Timothy in that uh, passage. He also talks about <clears throat> that in all of these things, there is still a level of expectation from you that you are to uphold as you consider yourself to be the child of God. Amen. Amen. And then, and then, and then let's read it uh, quickly so that when we discuss, we have the full context. I'll read from um, uh, verse in, in, in verse 2. Those who, those who have believing masters should not show them the disrespect just because they are fellow believers. Instead, they should serve them even better because their masters are, 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 too, dear, are too dear to them as fellow believers and are devoted uh, uh, devoted to the welfare of their slaves. These are the things you are to teach and insist on. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of the Lord Jesus Christ and to the godly teaching, they are, they are, is it consulted and then understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies in quarrels about the ways, uh, the results, in any strife, malicious talk, even sus suspicions and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means of a financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we, 
we can take nothing. But if we have uh, food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich and fall into temptation and trap into many foolish and harmful desires that plug people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from faith and pitched themselves with many uh, griefs. But verse 11, which is the point that I want to make, it says, but you, men of God, free from all this and pursue righteousness, pursue boldness, pursue faith, pursue love, pursue endurance and gentleness. Now, we know that um, the, this, what, 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 what Paul was, was entrusting in Timothy to teach is to say that uh, we should, all of us, irrespective of who we are, uh, find ourselves in, 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 as we measure ourselves, as we were talking a week ago, that the word of God is the, the reference of how we conduct our lives. And all the time we must always reflect and to see whether we are found in this passage that is being spoken about. Otherwise, our faith become in vain because we then teaching what we are not living. Uh, we are saying what we don't mean uh, because maybe it's a Sunday, uh, then we all talk good, but as we exit, then there's, it's something different. Amen. Amen. So this is, a, this is a, you know, when, when I was listening uh, to the guys that I was giving you an example about yesterday when we were, we were, we were, we were to the Pogo, um, they, they are not Christians, um, uh, the guys, they don't know much about, about the Christians. But already, they have already have got a perception about Christian. Why? Because of how ourselves, those of us who call ourselves Christians, find themselves far removed from what is to be our conduct. And similar to what Baba Gucha was saying the other day, that, uh, you know, if, and, and, and it does impact, Bayano, uh, it does impact on how people perceive Christianity, how we treat them, how we talk to them, how we associate with them, um, it's got an influence on how the next person views uh, Christianity. Primarily because they, they, it, it, Christianity, uh, as we say, is more of a lifestyle. It's not about uh, being at a certain point, at a certain time. It's, it's our conduct throughout. I think it's somewhere in Titus also, where he talks about that, uh, where Paul is teaching about that even outside the, the, what do we call the church, that behavior, that conduct of us calling ourselves, it must show because it is only through that conduct that others are able to see that this is different from the other. We read about the, um, the, 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 the disciple of Jesus and how, why the main reason why they were called uh, Christians is because they displayed a, 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 a certain behavior that people could observe that no, these ones, they appear to be looking like they are Christians. They look like they are like Christ, uh, Christ himself. Amen. Amen. I don't know, Bayano, what you are picking from what I'm saying here. That um, this do we think that um, is it too much that which is being asked of Timothy to teach to the church? Is it too much of a Christian to be to be to be to be to be to be asked of uh, showing all of these things? And I'm not uh, naive to the fact that there will be instances, and that's why we are made righteous through Christ Jesus because on our own we can't make ourselves righteous. Human beings have got their own weaknesses but it is Christ who through uh, the, the washing of, of our sins that enable us to be confidently call ourselves the children of God because of the grace that Christ himself has uh, already uh, given to us. Amen. Amen. So I don't know what's your your, your thoughts on this um, on these passages that uh, we, we have shared that um, 
as 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 um, in as much as we can't talk of uh, a love that we don't live, we can't talk of self-control that we don't live, we can't talk about uh, gentleness that we don't show, uh, we can't talk about a love that we don't show. Otherwise, we are people who are only hearing but now not doing as the scriptures uh, requires of us. Amen. Amen. So, 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 I see a hand there. Uh, let me give you your, your mic. Oh, thank you, man. Uh, good morning, friends. Uh, the battle begins this passage we have read from by the following. You shall know. Others say, know this. That is significant in understanding what we're about. To be let know or to know. So this means that we need to pay particular attention to what is going to be said. The Holy Spirit at that time, that was many, many, many years ago. It must have been more than 2,000 years ago, was speaking through Paul that Barcelona, if you are going to uh, evangelize, if you are going to be a part of this gospel, the following is very, very important for you to know, in other words, to be aware of, to acknowledge that the times in the very last days will be like this. And the events that are happening in the world that you described, what the Holy Spirit here was saying more than two years ago, it was essentially saying to me and you that as we are going to be fishing for men, we must know that these men that we are fishing will be fishing them in a chaotic world. We will be fishing them in a world that is going to be shaken by horrific events, by hostilities of any kind. Because people only want what is right by themselves. So we ourselves must be aware of that. We must not fall prey to that, first of all. But the people to whom we are going to evangelize, we must be aware that they will be grieved by these things that we are seeing. And how do we then move forward? The Holy Spirit is to help us move forward with these people. Because this chaos is going to be chaos that will mark the finality of it all. These are the days, the very, very last days. And we are seeing these things. So we are not to fall prey into it as, as Barcelona. We must listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling us and do exactly that. And that is started only when we give ourselves away completely unto God. There is no selfishness whatsoever when you do that. Whatever you are doing, it is not in your name. You don't lead people to you, you lead people to Christ. Whatever you say, it is not about Mr. Dobu, it is not about Mr. Momabul or his family. It's just a vessel. And we, we must do our best to ensure that the Holy Spirit always resides in us, to show us these things, because we can't do them. We are going to fall prey in these difficult times. It's so easy when you walk out, it's so easy to do the opposite. It's just so easy. And the Holy Spirit was telling us that, that this is mandatory for me and you to know. This is not optional. What you're telling us is not something that, ah, uh, if I want to. We must know, we must know these things. Even right here in church, we must know these things. All of us. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Love. And um, one of the things that uh, uh, we were sharing, uh, sharing with the guys yesterday is more on that you know, one of the things is you might be looking at it from the economic impact of the facility being in use. But then how many people also in that lost so much from themselves um, if, if you are only looking at just one aspect? Because if you look at other voices as well, from what was seen to be good uh, now which has been harmful in, in a great way to others 
you will then be able to know that uh, sometimes um, uh, what is important is for us as Christians to know what is the true word of God. Amen. Amen. And I want to say this, Pastor Rwanda, that uh, we, 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 at any given time, with the, the, what Mama Buta was saying about this gentleman that has been on my mind for, 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 since he spoke about it, is that the behavior of Mr. Mama Buta should not in any way take you away from the will of God. What we must always reference, which is what is in the word of God. Because only when we know the word of God, we will then be able to distinguish between Mama Bolo and what is in the word of God. Amen. Amen. Because the word of God is the reference for every Christian. And it is what keeps us rooted. That even if you hear about the behavior of Christians who have left the faith, the pastors that we have known to be powerful in the world, that have lost their faith, it doesn't change what the word of God is saying about Jesus Christ and his coming and his death to us. Because that is what makes us Christians. Nothing less than that. It is what, what makes us Christians, it is us having believed what is the truth, having accepted Christ in our lives as our savior, and being able to walk uh, in that in that faith, uh, which is then guided by the word of God. Amen. Amen. And uh, and in Titus, because there is emphasis. You know, when you read these uh, letters of Timothy to to the guys, um, he says that uh, in Titus chapter two, he says, "You, however, you must teach what is appropriate to sound doctrine." Amen. Amen. Teach the older. Uh, uh, older men to be temperate, with respect, self-control, and sound in faith and in endurance. Amen. Amen. That uh, so so all of these are are, are, are are prepositions to say there is all these behaviors that may be ungodly, maybe in the church, maybe where we work, maybe everywhere else, but we are not to conform. To the standard of this world but we are to be guided by what is the word of god and we are to live our christian life and walk guided by what is in the word of god amen, amen. and then but when we call ourselves now the christians how when we call ourselves christ-like people then it means that also our conduct must also show that we are these people that the word of God is talking about. To say, you are to demonstrate, um, I mean, it's the fruit of spirit in a, in, in a way, because some of these aspects, if you go to the fruit of spirit, you find them. To say, which are to reflect um, a Christian character. That a Christian character, you must locate it in the fruit of spirit. Amen. Amen. Any other contribution? on this uh, subject, how we understand these letters of, 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 of Timothy to, to the church and also whether he is asking too much of us as Christians or is it something that we should ordinarily in, because as we say, I see you men of God, I, uh, as we say that this Christianity is more of a, of a lifestyle, it's not a uh, and more, it's not a religious act that you then, because now you are in black today, you look Christian. And then uh, get out, you are a different person. That's not the faith that we are talking about. We're talking about a lifestyle of a Christian who recognizes own errors and repent to God. And always seek to be guided by the word of God. Mr. Dovin? Thank you so much, sir. And, and what you are reading to us today, it's not meant to scare us. It's meant for us to be spiritually alert. If I were to use uh, some military language, it means the following, that we as Christians, 
are in spiritual combat. And for you to win, 